Good so while, yeah. while the world is my oyster, yep. like you said. Enjoy it, Mel. I mean, enjoy. enjoy it. Because yeah. believe me, as soon as I get a chance, they'll tear you down and spit you out and throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> In 1995, Antonio Richards, better known as Tony Rich, broke onto the music scene along with other artists that were part of what the Washington Post described as a soul revival. His debut album, entitled Words, was certified platinum and brought us the monster hit, Nobody, Nobody Knows. knows. He went on to receive four Grammy nominations and opened up for Sting, Tina Turner, and Mariah Carey. But even with all of his success, people still confuse him with Babyface. While it's true that Tony was signed to LaFace Records, the label Babyface co-founded, and Tony's song Nobody Knows sounds similar to Babyface's song When Can I See You, that's where the similarities end. Babyface has gone on to experience longevity in the industry, while Tony fell off the radar. Before we get started, don't forget to grab something to eat at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of turkey, beef, and bacon jerky, creamy ranch and bacon popcorn, and green apple licorice. After his 1989 high school graduation, Tony decided to skip college to pursue music. The Detroit native worked as a songwriter for a group, which led to a chance meeting with basketball player John Sally. At the time, John was looking to develop acts, but when he met the group, he was more drawn to Tony. He allowed Tony to utilize his recording studio, and that's how he got connected to Pebbles, who introduced him to her then-husband, L.A. Reid. L.A. signed Tony to LaFace Records as a songwriter and producer, and he began writing songs for several artists, including Michael Bolton, Boys to Men, and Tony Braxton. He stayed in that role for about two years before LaFace decided to develop him as an artist. Tony told R&B Junkie official website he was already aware that his recording contract was going to be skewed in the label's favor, but he wasn't too worried about it because he was still making money on the front end as a songwriter. His first single, Nobody Knows, was co-written by his brother, Joe. The song was released in November 1995 and became a breakout hit. It peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. Even though the audience at his shows was predominantly black, Tony wasn't getting a lot of love on R&B radio stations. He blamed it on his style of music and his voice, but has also gone on the record to put some separation between himself and that genre. He told the Baltimore Sun, I never perceived myself as an R&B artist. More pop, rock, country, funk, and rhythm and blues. Because there's a difference between that and R&B. His debut album, Words, dropped in January 1996, and Tony took home a Grammy Award for Best R&B Album. The Babyface comparison raged on, with some people going as far as to claim Babyface was actually singing on Tony's song, Nobody Knows. Tony made it clear to blogger Clayton Perry that Babyface didn't have any involvement in his album. He and Babyface talked on the phone once and expressed an interest in working together, but things never quite panned out. Babyface was far too busy developing his new protege, John B. Since Tony wrote the majority of the songs on his album and was getting paid up front as a songwriter, he was entitled to a huge payday when the project went platinum. He told blogger Clayton Perry he bought houses, cars, and purchased a car for his mother, and started contributing to her lifestyle as well. So by that point, making music just wasn't about feeding his passion and creativity. He had someone else he was financially responsible for as well. In the summer of 1996, he signed on to perform at that year's Smoke and Grooves Festival alongside other artists like the Fugees, Cypress Hill, A Tribe Called Quest, and Busta Rhymes. According to Entertainment Weekly, Tony abruptly withdrew himself from the lineup and passed on the opportunity to heighten his already high profile. Sources close to the singer told the media outlet that Tony stepped away from the festival after learning how many rappers were in the lineup. When asked about the rumor, Tony, who was described as being agitated, told Entertainment Weekly that the tour, quote, turned into something different where I didn't really fit, so we had to pull off of that one. Tony released one more album on LaFace in 1998 entitled Bird's Eye, which also featured Eric Clapton. It was more revealing and more adventurous than his first album, and LaFace 
wasn't feeling it. The label pulled back on promoting the project. His label mate Usher was tearing up the charts, and Tony told R&B Junkie official website that LaFace started to push more funds to market Usher's music instead. Not only were the creative differences between his label souring his mood, but his manager left to take a job somewhere else. Tony told blogger Clayton Perry he was also dealing with a lot of stress. His focus went from creating the kind of music he loved to creating music that would help him pay all of his bills. He was also growing leery of people in his life that had ulterior motives. He decided he was ready to move on and simplify his life. His lawyers worked out all the legalities to get him released from his contract, and he got rid of things that weren't necessary for his life. He continued writing songs for himself and others, and after about two years, he was released from LaFace. As a free agent, he worked on getting signed to another major label. But something happened to him that has happened to several artists we featured on our channel. Every single door was slammed in Tony's face. Although he didn't go as far as to say he was blacklisted, Tony told the Baltimore Sun, I had sales, I had awards, all of that didn't matter when it was time to get a new deal. Thankfully, since he was still receiving royalties and upfront payments as a songwriter, he wasn't strapped for cash. At some point, he got married and started having children. In 2003, after a five-year hiatus, he released the album Resurrected on an independent label. Unfortunately, the album was a commercial flop, although it did receive rave reviews. After that, Tony bounced around to several different independent labels and ran into even more issues. Some of the labels didn't know how to promote his music, while others didn't properly apply their resources to push his projects. As of this video, he has released seven studio albums in total, with the most recent being 2017's Encaustic. Sadly, none of his singles have landed on the charts in close to 25 years. By 2018, Tony was divorced and the father of four children. He told City News website he met a woman on Facebook and he really liked her. So he flew out to Canberra, Australia to meet her. After that initial meeting, he decided he wanted to spend more time with her. So he started living half of the year in Australia and the other half in various places around the U.S. He added, I have a place to stay in Atlanta and a place in Los Angeles, but I'm never there long enough to call either of them home. These days, his Instagram account is dedicated to his artwork, and some of his pieces were even featured at a Miami art gallery in December 2021. Aside from making more music, because I'll always continue to do that, but I'm also doing a lot of fine arts, so I've mixed in the visual arts, uh, which I did before doing music, and I'm, I'm really enjoying working with um, up-and-coming artists. We're unsure if Tony will ever release another studio album, but thankfully he has made plenty of music to hold us over until then. Let us know if you're shocked by what happened to Tony Rich, and thanks for watching RRG.